Botswana is the world's second largest producer of diamonds, only slightly beaten by Russia. Because diamonds are the most precious stones on earth and a small tiny piece like this can cost anywhere from $100,000 to $1 million, most of the information about diamond production has been hidden behind closed doors for a very long time. Today, I managed to get access to one of the biggest diamond factories in Botswana to see what really goes on inside and how diamonds are really extracted and polished. This is the most expensive rock I've ever held. <laughs> oh. And I see a circle in it. To help me understand the diamond production process better is Reis, who is a diamond entrepreneur who has been in the trade and design of diamond for over eight years. How big is the diamond industry in Botswana? How well, big is it? I mean, diamonds are our greatest contributor to our GDP, right? So diamonds are basically what Botswana thrives on. You'll see diamonds featured on our currency. Yeah. You'll see it featured in most of our national advertising. And I mean, even when you arrive at the airport, you will see presence of diamonds. And Botswana is known to be a diamond country because of its best practices. Diamond mining began in 1967, a year after Botswana gained its independence from Britain. A huge diamond mine was discovered in a remote area called Orapa, some 250 miles from Gabron. The company that found the mine was De Beers, which is currently the biggest diamond company in the world. For the first time ever, we've secured the longest sales agreement with the Botswana government. We're going to get 10 years of supply to be distributed through De Beers. Within this period, De Beers entered into a 50-50 joint venture with the government, which led to the economic prosperity for the people people of Botswana. Before the discovery of this mine, Botswana was one of the poorest countries in the world. Today, it's among the most prosperous countries in Africa with a real middle class and a per capita income approaching $6,000 a year. The government of Botswana currently owns 15% of the De Beers Group and 50% of Debswana, the De Beers and Botswana joint venture, in order to ensure that the profits from its diamond resources benefit the country. So this is essentially a diamond polishing factory, what we refer to as manufacturing. Yeah. So in a factory like this, rough production that is purchased through the government will come to a factory like this. There are different factories that specialize in different kinds of polishing. Yeah. Some will specialize in polishing many small diamonds, some will specialize in your bigger sizes. So it depends on what they look for in terms of their rough that they buy. So every single rough stone is planned as an individual product. Oh, There's wow. no copy paste in this business. So we will look at some of the polishing, we will look at how these stones are planned mm. in terms of what cut it should be, the size that it will come out during the polishing process. Hold it like this, yeah. so that when it falls, it falls in your palm. Oh, so it doesn't fall on the floor? Yeah, so it doesn't oh, fall sorry. on the floor. <laughs> sorry. Then you hold like this. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Try the almonds. This is expensive um, stuff. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Just I got it like this? Yeah. Okay. Oh. And I see a circle in it. Wow. <laughs> it's a real diamond. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a real diamond. <laughs> I was born and brought up in Botswana. My family is originally from India, okay. but they actually left India seven generations ago. Seven generations? Yeah. yeah. So you have Botswana blood yes. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Botswana is home. It's, it's home. You know, it's all I know. I've always been here. Our family is very heavily based here. All our businesses operate here. So. Okay. How did you get started in diamonds? So I was lucky enough when I got started to meet one of the most prominent figures in the diamond industry and I was lucky enough to be introduced through our real estate businesses okay. to one of the biggest dealers in the industry. He saw a lot of potential in me luckily and he said look you know let me teach you a little bit about this business. From there I went to India, I trained in his factory in Surat, I spent some time there and I spent some time with him and his family learning a lot about diamonds. There's so much about this industry that we don't know until we actually get an insider's view into what goes into it. From there I sort of gradually made my way through the processes from understanding and learning the rough and the manufacturing into learning more about polished and then I made my way into jewelry which I felt was more suited to me as an entrepreneur, as an individual and that's where I found my sort of niche in the market. Why did you decide that you wanted to start your own diamond company? 
in this or not. When I moved back after university, I started to realize that you can go to the market where Tiffany & Co is already operating, yeah. or you can start in the market where you can be the Tiffany & Co in 10 years, yeah, true, right? True. And I think that's if we look at visionary entrepreneurs and where they started, they didn't go to the places that there was still already competition and people were established, they thought of ideas in new places. And if you look at a place like Botswana in itself, it's such a young country post-independence, and so many people have done so many amazing things, but they started when these things were not in existence in the country. And I think it's important to look at, you know, it's important to look at and highlight that it may be harder, it may be a harder start, but that's where your potential for growth really, really is. I travel a lot and one of my biggest problems so far has been communication, especially when I travel to a country where they don't speak English. This has affected my creation process as communication is key for what I do. One of the ways I'm finally able to solve this problem is by using the language learning app called Rosetta Stone. The current language I'm learning is French which I'm getting really good at, like I can tell you to subscribe to my channel in French if you love this video. Abonnez-vous à ma chaîne si vous aimez mon vidéo. See? <laughs> With this app, I can now explore and communicate with more people across Africa easily. One of my favorite features of the Rosetta Stone app is that you can use the voice recognition tool to perfect your accent and speech. Les hommes lisent. Les hommes lisent. Rosetta Stone really prepares you for real-life conversations in real-life scenarios and it helps you make meaningful connections with real people. It has so many languages from Hindi to Spanish and one of the best parts is you can learn on the go while using the mobile app. Currently, Rosetta Stone was kind enough to give me a discount code that gives you 50% off your first subscription. I recommend you get the lifetime subscription because learning a new language takes time. It's the best value for your money and it gives you access to all the languages forever. Click the link in the description now to get started. Now let's jump right back into the video. Before you went into Diamond, what were you doing before then? So I actually came, got into the diamond industry fresh out of university. Really? Um, it was not something that I ever thought of really going into. I'd looked at jewelry because of coming from a background of fashion design. I'd entered some competitions. I actually went to school to study fashion design before going on to university and then to study media and sociology. And I never really thought about it. Coming back to Botswana, I was going to get into the real estate business. I never really thought about the diamond industry. And when I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to be introduced to it, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with all the detail that goes into it, as well as the people that you meet that are in this industry have a passion like no other, I believe. Mm. Having a passion for every single little diamond to be an individual product, seeing magic and beauty in every little piece. It takes a very special kind of person to see that potential from rough to polish and see the beauty that can be extracted from like a natural rock, essentially. Would you say more people in Africa love going out to buy that buying from here? I think it is a matter of preference when it comes to branding. Okay. Something that I've noticed is that we shouldn't underestimate the African market in any way. We've got huge numbers of people. A country like Botswana has a small population. In terms of our market, it's a start. We've got a jewelry brand which wasn't in existence three years ago. We didn't have a fine jewelry offering, the same as we do now. But as our own local brands come up, as our own local entrepreneurs come up in this industry, we will see more buying power coming towards these companies. Where does your ideas and inspiration come for the designs you make? So I think in terms of jewelry specifically, yeah. I've always attached to a very organic style. I like to showcase the diamond first and foremost mm. and design something that showcases the diamond as opposed to using diamonds to create my design. If that makes sense. We work with a very bespoke offering to clients who want a custom piece. And that's always exciting because it brings you clients who always want something different. You know, we have clients who want a, a fancy colored diamond, for example. If you look on this wall here, you'll see natural pink diamonds. And this is something, again, that there's so much information that goes into because the majority of people, when they think diamonds, they think white. White, yeah, that's, right? that's what I think too. But you get natural pink, you get natural blue, you'll get varying different hues of these colors. You'll get yellow, you'll get brown, you'll get gray. And they are natural diamonds of different colors. And again, you'll get a client who wants something so unique and so beautiful in how rare this actually is. And then you design a piece that doesn't take away from that, but highlights and showcases that diamond in its own natural beauty. Let's 
say I'm interested in diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it would be easy for somebody like me or like young Africans to get into? Well, I mean, look, it takes a start. Like I said, whether that comes through um, training programs, whether it comes through meeting the right people, where is your area of application within an industry? You know, we talk diamonds. Okay, I want to get involved in diamonds. But which part of diamonds? So I would say, if any young entrepreneurs are keen on the diamond industry, do some research. Look at which parts of the industry you're actually interested in. You know, is it the jewelry? Is it the mining? Is it the polishing and manufacturing like we see here? And that will really dictate the route that you take to try and, you know, find your gap in the market. Would you say any of those training programs exist in Botswana? Yeah. You have to, oh, they exist? Yes, they do. Really? They do. Can you just give us like an example of that for like a lot of young Botswana as well, yeah. like a training program that exists. So, for example, I was lucky enough to be on the judging panel for the De Beers Shining Light Awards, which is a jewelry design competition that was held in Botswana. It's an incredible opportunity for young designers who have an interest in jewelry to really get involved on a large platform, get noticed by the right people, and also what they've done, which is amazing, is they're looking at designs and creative voices that also display commercial viability. Yeah, that we <laughs> so I have another question. I see so, so many people working here. Do you have an estimate of like how many people are here? How many people you have employed here? So this factory alone employs around 250 people in different departments. 250 people? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I can see a lot of people from here, like yes. Botswana is working. Yeah. How did they get into this? Was it from school or was it from the program? So this is again training. So what factories, a lot of international factories have done is uh, they've taken on a lot of locals and they've trained our Botswana in you know a lot of these processes Process. that go into the polishing. So there's a huge transfer of skills that's happened. Mm. In the factory is the best place to learn. Yeah. People from backgrounds like this who learn polishing can then go on and you know find their own place in the industry, whether that means growth in polishing and manufacturing itself or some other part, but that education and understanding the process that goes into polishing diamonds is the start. It needs plenty of concentration. Yes. <laughs> I hope I'm not distracting you. No, no, it's, it's okay. Would you say diamonds are a, guest, a girl's best friend? Yes. <laughs> Obviously. What are you working on currently? What are you doing? Um, this is what you call mapping. A print will come out. And it will show the parameters of the diamond. So if you look through here as I'm holding it, you'll see a natural. See that little Oh, dent? the dent, yeah. yeah. So that's what we call a natural. The natural. That's left over from the, from the rough texture. Can I hold it? Yeah. Let's <laughs> hold it. I'm trying to hold it. This is 10 carats. So you said hold it like this. Yeah, so it, if so you're comfortable, before. just make sure you don't drop it. <laughs> Because uh, we have to be careful. This is the most expensive rock I've ever held. <laughs> Maybe one day when I'm when I'm getting married, I'll propose to my wife with something like this. <laughs> She's gonna show you this video now when the time. Comes. <laughs> you know when you're talking about diamonds now, what came to my head is people always saying carats. What does that really mean? Can so in the general understanding when we go to buy a diamond from a jeweler for example we'll say one carat or two carats relating to size however carat actually is the density of a stone we relate it to size because it's what the eye sees yeah. but in actual fact when we put on a scale the caratage is the density of the stone yeah oh that's just what it means it, so it, tr it translates to the weight oh, okay. in plain terms but we don't use grams okay. to identify diamonds we use carats so the carat weight is related to the density of that stone. So this is our Azuro Boutique Showcase. Oh, okay. This is where we show some of our designs. We provide a very bespoke service to clients who want Botswana diamonds specifically. Mm. So I can see here, these are like engagement rings. Or are this, or these, are, these are predominantly engagement rings, but we do a range of every single type of piece. What are the ranges of people who buy diamonds? Is it more of the older people from your own perspective? I'd say we have clients across the board. The clients come to us. We just came from the factory. What's the process from those stones to this beautiful design you're seeing in front of us? Okay, so in a lot of cases, we do look at what's trending in the jewelry market. We look mm. at what's trending on social media, which diamond cuts particularly are in demand. Mm. For example, if a certain celebrity has an, an oval cut or a cushion cut ring, generally the demand for those cuts increases. What we then do is we design around inspirations from trending jewelry, from what different designers are doing, as well as 
suiting it to exactly what the client wants. So in many cases, the client will sit with us, we'll have a consultation, and they will talk to us about their lifestyle. Do they want a ring that sits quite high off the hand or something that's quite flat? Oh. Do they prefer a band style or do they like a solitaire, which is a single diamond? Can you show me an example of a solitaire? Of course, yes. A solitaire is a ring like this. Hmm. So that is just one single diamond. Okay. This one's on a white gold band, and that's what we refer to as a solitaire. Oh, this is this is white gold? Yes. So, just to give an idea for yes. people out there, this is... How much is this? So this one here specifically would be $3,000. Wow. If you want to get married, you need to have to <laughs> money. <laughs> so the average engagement ring, I would say, if someone just asks for a general idea, I'd say anywhere between something starting from about $3,000 up to about $8,000. It's quite a range, yeah. but again, they're clients for every different kind of ring. For example, this is one of our very popular designs, which is a halo design. So that's got a ring of smaller diamonds around mm. the main stone. And this would be like how much? This one here is $8,000. Can I, can I touch it? Yes, of <laughs> Wow. I'm sure you want you want this. If you want this, reach out to him. His contact is in the description below. <laughs> One of the great things I noticed while I was researching Botswana was the tradition of enlightened leadership. The country has been democratic since it gained independence. It has had intelligent, honest leadership. It has understood the power of economic growth to improve the lives of its citizens. That's something that is not so common across Africa. It would be really great to see more countries across Africa having a better sense of responsibility with their resources. Botswana is filled with a whole lot more and I'm glad I finally got to experience it. I have more videos on Botswana coming soon, so stay tuned. If you love this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.